All right, our last Culture Couch Live for the year, 2021. It's just about <laughs> over going into Christmas, Carly, Emil, Woz. Who is he? Now, as you know, the reason I emphasise 2021 because I forgot the year and the uh, the Christmas card presentation, so I apologise for that. <laughs> uh, which gets probably into, Murph, I'll start with you. What have we learnt from the year? I guess what we've done, I don't know, what's how many Culture Couch Lives have we done this year? I just looked it up because so I knew you'd ask me. This is number 28 for the year. 28? Yeah. Very All right. Excellent. Cool. 28 for the year. So oh, over the three is 27 and all our workshops. Murph, what, what's the main takeaway for you? Oh, mate, I keep a journal. So I've, I've got about 15 books filled with notes from this year. This is, this is one of the great years of all time. <laughs> um, I don't think anyone's going to forget this year. Um, what have I learned? I've learned that you need to be kind to your people around you because I think that under genuine pressure, it can be it's pretty easy to get lost in the in the particular when you're all living in the same house and you've got people dragging internet usage out of the system when I need it from my Zoom meetings for clients. So I've learned, learned to be kind and speak respectfully to people. Um, probably, probably the big one for me is about le leaders leaders not leading or or leaders leading. So if you look at it from a class half full side of it, I think. The, the clients that we've worked with that have done the best have been the ones that have trusted the people that, that um, they're working with and they haven't got too caught up in the detail of the job. So they've, they've had the capacity to, to lead and coach and facilitate as opposed to doing. Um, and what that does is it creates more time for them, builds trust with the rest of the group, and then that, that filters down through the organisation. Um, if you look at it from the glass half empty side of it, the leaders that are doing, they, they're, they're stressed, they haven't got much time, they're not demonstrating the trust they need to for their, for their teams, which then puts pressure on um, their people and then that goes, that goes down through the organisation. So it's, for me, it just reinforced under pressure people, um, you know, it, it really tests us and I think we've, a lot of people have been under a lot of pressure this year and I think that really highlighted that fact for me. As a, as a leader, don't get caught doing the whole thing. Step back, trust your people, coach, facilitate, um, and don't get caught doing. So, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's amazing, Murph, isn't it? How many times have we addressed that word busy in a workshop? And once we get underneath what busy looks like, it's, well, I'm doing everyone else's work, isn't it? Which is, yeah. which is your... People just yeah. keep adding, people just keep adding stuff and... and yeah. It's been it's been a really difficult year because even for us, like you know, we would go from Adelaide to Sydney to Melbourne to to Hobart in one day in terms of workshops. So you know, you could just because there's no travel time, so you could just add yeah. stuff in. But yeah. I think I think we spend too much time adding and not enough time taking out. What what can I not do? Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's a great point. I, I like that. What can I not do? It's a really yeah. good way to look at it, isn't it? As opposed yeah. to what what more can I do? So Carly. Um, yeah, over to you. Yeah, it's interesting to reflect on the year. It has been an incredibly difficult year, um, you know, from a personal point of view with homeschooling and all of, all of that stuff. I thought, you loved, I thought you loved homeschooling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think that kindness really did shine through, though, because we had to be a lot more tolerant of everyone's personal situations and, you know, the amount of time we had kids and cats and dogs and builders and whatever else in, in the background of our Zoom meetings or our workshops, um, everyone, everyone got that insight look into people's lives and um, were a lot more tolerant around what they were going through. And so I think that was a really nice trend to come out of it. Um, but the thing for me was really around accountability. So our program, a lot of, a lot of what we would try and implement um, requires the team to be accountable to the behaviours uh, and just seeing that process as we work through the program with different businesses and different teams how important that accountability was and how important it was for people to say you know yes I'm going to deliver on my word and I'm going to you know show you that I can do that in my behaviour and how important that is for the performance overall of a team um, that that was really uh, highlighted throughout the year and really important um, for all of our clients, I think. 
Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, one of the things we talk about a lot is leaders being role models, and that's holding yourself accountable, isn't it? It's hard to be a really good leader if you're just going to tell people what to do and you don't do it yourself. So it's been a, a really good lesson again for us this year. Um, Neil, I'll, I'll head over to you now. Yeah, um, reflecting, I think that uh, helping teams understand they actually are a team. I think a lot of the time we get work um, and we uncover the curtain and we see that people are functioning in their solos. The executive team are actually they don't even look at. I remember, you know, you and Jez will often ask at the start of a session, "Are we a team?" Mm. And there's a bit of chin stroking going on. And like, oh, I actually never thought about it that way. And then when you actually do the uncovery process, if you will, you start to realise or you help them help the team realise that they do need to work as a team. And then you do your department to department feedback and real talk and you start to open up that, you know, if we hand over the work from one area to the company to the next, it's what's, what might take one group three or five more minutes can take the next group two to three hours to fix up. Yeah. So when people actually sit in a room and, have the conversation together about that actual sort of work handover or how the work flows through the business, they start to change behaviour because they're like, wow, I don't want to, I don't want to let my teammate down. And I think that's what real accountability is. You don't want to let your mates down rather than um, what happens to you when your things aren't working. Cause that's when most people review performance, isn't it? When things aren't working, but um, yeah, that's been really enjoyable uh, over here with a few clients and, really bring that team first mentality. Um, and then you start to see people just naturally figure it out and they you know, sort of somewhat self-manage and self-police and take proactive behaviour to realise that they haven't got the relationship they need with another person in another part of the company. And they just, separate to a meeting, they just be proactive. They go out for a coffee and go, hey, how can I be a better teammate for you? Because I now realise what the impact of my work has a huge impact on your extra work. So I think that's been really um, enjoyable, helping teams come together and have that one conversation. And then in that moment, go, right, what are we going to do differently now structurally to help move the ball or the puck around the, around the business in a more efficient and in a more team-first type mentality? So that's been really enjoyable this year from my perspective. Yeah, I think sport does that incredibly well, doesn't it? I mean, you look at the Melbourne Footy Club, it's not the forwards, backs and mids. And yeah, you know, it's them doing their separate meetings and, and separate conversations. But the reason they win the premiership is because when they come together yeah. during the week of training and on game day, it's it's that one team approach. And you're right, it does come up a, a lot in the workshops. Um, was uh, what about yourself? I mean, I'm not involved in the programs, I see it from my lens. I think the big thing that I can tell through this, or actually the last few months, and specifically as we look to next year, and it's about the article we're posting on Brene Brown and impact players, but also just leaders in general. And that's, you know, leaders get to positions and the expectation is that they should know what they're doing and they should be able to deliver the best outcome without any support. I really struggle with that because I think oh, we always reflect on our favourite statement is that leaders get to positions of, of power because of their individual performance, not because of their leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And I think that evolution for us at business next year, and I think the gap that we're going to fill, and it's going to be a really successful gap, is that individual leadership support and coaching. Because I, I do think, I know myself personally, this forum is my leadership coaching forum, right? Like I get to come here and talk about what I'm working on, but listen to you guys and how you are having success within the programs with leaders, with groups, and the little um, triggers of learning that I can take from these, you know, the 28 uh, Culture Couch lives that I've had is, is ultimately my own leadership development coaching from my four coaches sitting here, um, which is amazing. Um, and I think it's a real gap that individual leaders think they need to be able to take it on themselves and fumble through it and find themselves in some pretty dark positions, I think, because they they have this high expectation of themselves, but it's crazy to try and do it yourself. And it's impossible actually for a lot of instances and you need that support. And I'm looking forward to, to next year and actually really developing um, the back end or the technical part or the, the performance center part of our leadership and coaching 
um, centre with inside the performance centre and I'm looking forward to obviously expanding our business to incorporate that to help leaders be successful. It's been a huge spike, hasn't it, Was It's been a massive yeah. spike. Huge, huge, and even more so now. Like, like if you thought about leaders not having all the skills before, well, what about leaders now with, with a hybrid workplace um, or you know, remote teams or... You know, how do you navigate that? I mean, the, the old leaders who expected the, you know, their staff to be there every day, what is their new norm and how do they really create engagement with their groups? Um, and it comes back to yours, Jez, your statement. It's, it's actually creating the right culture and framework for your layer below so they can install the, the, the relationships with their team um, and not do the work, lead and lead by example. Yeah, and trust them. I, I just a, a shout out to what you was for the work you've done in the performance center. I know a lot, a lot of our clients. I don't know how many exactly are on it, but I know a lot of our clients have transitioned, and and you and M and Carly probably lesser degree to Rusey and myself. But you know the work you put into there, mate, it's been fantastic. Yeah, appreciate it. I think it's going to be a good, good next year. And I look at the reporting that we're seeing now. I was just looking at some of the reports that Nick um, put up this morning, but just around even just the wellness part, right? Like, you know, you go into your performance centre and, and you see something there that helps you sort of have a little bit of a introductory course on mindfulness and meditation. The, um, the actual utilisation of that since we've updated the reporting is significant. So it really is an aspect that's missed, I think, as well. I think it leads into the second conversation around the culture couch. Um, what about well, you, Rudy? Did you what, about, what about you? Oh, yeah, I forgot myself. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to. <laughs> you are. The, you are. 20, seriously. I'm, I'm ready to get into 2020, 2022. Very selfless um, as a green personality, Jez. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I think for me, it's probably the connection. Yeah, you know, the, the people have missed the connection. You know, and a lot of our workshops. I've probably been longer on Zoom, haven't we? Not not by design, but but actually the conversation has been flowing. And I think to your credit, particularly Carly and Jez, who I've worked with closely, you've let that conversation flow, which I think has been really important. And a, and a lot of the conversation, to be perfectly frank, is about how's the family, how's everyone going? And I think for me, it's everyone's missed the connection, you know, and, and our workshops, and again, shout out to Carly and and Jez, a lot of our workshops have provided a really good space for the connection. And I'm sure some people have got on and gone, I, oh, you know, here's another leadership workshop. And, and then all of a sudden the conversation has been flowing and how you're going and people have been learning a lot about each other. And, and amazing, hasn't it? I don't know, almost hundred percent of our workshops, and you can jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. A lot of people have never met each other face to face, have they? From, from memory. Yeah. 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 Which is and nice. it's really funny. I, I love it when you meet somebody who's, Completely different than you thought they were going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you're in trouble if you've described yourself as six foot five and you know, yeah. and, <laughs> and you turn up at uh, your new work office and you're five eleven or something like that. I don't well, know. that's so, going to happen to us because we've just hired two more, two new team members to start in February that we've never met before. No, yeah. no, that's exactly. But no, that's that's probably the thing for me that people have missed during the last eighteen months. So we've provided some great connections. So well done to everyone. I think the next thing that we want to touch on just maybe just quickly is we've been really strong on leaders looking after themselves. And one of the yeah. probably the most frustrating things I get is when I hear a leader say, oh, I haven't had a holiday for four years. And they, they, they say it's like a badge of honor. I look at them like they're just crazy. I mean, you, A, you're not that important that you can't be there. For, <laughs> and, and, and B, why is that a badge of honor? And we talk about yeah. this a lot. So I think it's a really critical period for people to have a break. It really, really is. It's a critical period for everyone to get a break. Um, so maybe just whip around. Murph, what are, you, what are you doing the next couple of weeks? What are you doing to relax and recharge? Because it's really important. First, I'd like to congratulate you for being the ultimate role model in, in leading this, Rusey. Like, I think you, 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 you're just like phenomenal. <laughs> uh, the I lifestyle key. I'll tell you a true story. I, I, won't mention, I won't mention the two coaches, but two Two premiership coaches. I ran into both of them after they won the premiership. And you know what my main advice was? Get away. I said to them, have a have, I don't know what you're like with Bomber Murph, but my main message, and one of the things that I was always really strong on, I was really I was fortunate because my wife's American, but getting out of Australia, I, I found that so valuable as an AFL coach. 
because when you're in when you're on the beach in Hawaii yeah. or you're somewhere in Africa, no one has a clue about AFL football. So yeah. something I've always been strong on. I remember talking to those two AFL coaches, and it was both at the draft, both after they'd won the premiership, and I said to both of them, "Have a break, get a because I were already talking about the next year and mm. Brucey had you know you went two oh five, two oh six. I said, guys, hang on, have a break, get away and recharge your batteries because it's going to come around really, really quick. Yeah. Yep. So uh, what am I doing? I'm, well, we live down the beach, so we're going to go home and spend uh, two weeks at the beach. Um, the kids are all coming home, celebrate celebrate the family. Mum and dad are coming, and <clears throat> mum hasn't been so well, so it'll be really nice just to sort of celebrate with my kids, my brothers and sisters, my parents, and Liz's family as well, I suspect. So, yeah, so we're, we're just going to hang at the beach, mate. So that'll be nice for from the end of next week, I think, through to about the 10th we come back. So, yeah, so it'll be yeah, pretty relaxing. Excellent. Carly? Uh, yeah, well, we've, Ben's family are on New South Wales. We haven't seen them for two years pretty much. So they're all coming down for Christmas, which will be nice. So everyone will have grown up a lot since we saw them last. So, yeah, just some family time, Rusey. Um, and then, yeah, just trying to trying to wind down and recover after the year that's been, I think. Yeah. And was it uh, maybe first tell us a little bit about your move because you've moved down the beach too. So how how's that affected your health and wellness? I guess in a sense, in a pretty difficult. And and the second question is, as I said to the others, what, what are you going to do over the next couple of weeks? Probably go down and whack the budgie smugglers on and straight <laughs> stuff uh, down the beach. I suspect. Yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, I moved down the coast. I'm in the block now, and it's yeah, it's been game changer. Like I'm. Literally, probably fifty meters from the beach, and the beach is pretty awesome here. But I've got a nice um, or a pool and all that. But just the kids being able to ride to school, so they're they'll be home home this afternoon uh, from school for the summer. Um, and I think you know that their lifestyle change and their happiness impacts our lifestyle and our happiness. And that's been really good. So they come back and jump in the pool and that encourages you to have a little kid, bit of kid-like behaviour, right? Because you, you're, most of the year you're so serious. Um, but actually I've, I've started Gratitude Journal. So uh, Tammy is a big influence on, on my life. Um, and I, I'm, a big, I'm a big person around structure, obviously being a blue and just following routine. So, you know, I'm, the four major things I do, each day to start the day or even if I can't do it at the start, I'll ensure I get it done sometime during the day. And then I write down, you know, my, what I'm grateful for because it's been a tough year and, and, and it's hard sometimes to find good things to reflect on, but it's important to. Um, and so I've been, I've been really religious with my gratitude journal, so I've been doing this um, every day now. So that's my new, new repertoire. Excellent. Now, Em, you're a little bit different because you're a bit like me at the moment. You're in the northern hemisphere, so you won't be yeah. strutting your stuff down the beach with the budgie smugglers, but what would no. you feel? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's the opposite. We were sort of contemplating trying to get down to, like, Florida or South America, but um, with Rio, um, he'd have to quarantine, which just throws the whole thing out of whack. So, um, But he's old enough now. We'll probably um, skate. We've got a skating rink down the road there and we've got the lake there now. Well, obviously the lake's out of the question, but I'm looking forward to taking him out on the ice. I'm not the world's best skater, so it might be the blind leading the blind in that one, but um, we're looking forward to that. And um, what, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, bike hip, the bike just had a hip replacement taking yeah. his, his head on ice and he's never skated before. No, no it, it, like, it'll be good. Oh, uh, you know what? Like, all the people watching this, have a good look at the meal because you won't see him the same again. <laughs> you know, uh, Murph, one, I reckon one of the funniest things is when you see <laughs> someone skate for the first time. Oh, it's yeah. actually, it's one of the funniest things. So can it you take like a video? Yeah, take a video of me and we'll whack it on Culture Couch Live. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing is um, I, was a, I used to love drawing as a kid. So um, yep. I've written a little book for Rio. So I'm going, to, I'm going to do some drawing and illustrations over the break. Um, and my wife, Andrea, is a beautiful artist, actually. So um, that's going to be an enjoyable, fun thing to do. We'll draw some pictures and then he'll just scribble all over the top of it. But just the enjoyment of that quality time. And I think 
I just had this conversation last night in the car with Dre coming home. Um, she got a bit concerned about too many things in the break because the break is quite short, like, mm. you know, Friday and then back to school as a school teacher on January 3rd, it yeah. just flies by. So we actually went into the calendar and said, right, these days we're not doing anything. There's no no one interrupts us on these days. So no booking a lunch. Yeah. I have a habit of wanting to catch up with everyone, but we've just said, nah, we're just having a couple of days of downtime and we might literally yeah. just spend the whole day inside and just play board games and dance and all that sort of stuff. So By the end of that, uh, by the end of that day, Andrew's <laughs> going to be looking to get you out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Get it through. I hope she didn't schedule two in a row. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's my strategic plan because then I've got these. I've got some boys catch ups in a row. So yeah, do the work early, I reckon. But they're definitely, definitely blocking the time out and that extended period of time, no phone and that sort of stuff. I think it's really important for the brain. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, guys. Well, yeah, for me, I think. And pick up something was. I mean, it's been a tough year for everyone. Nothing better than we're really fortunate getting up in the snow. I don't know. I don't know if you're a snow skier yeah. and like just getting and skiing. Like, there's nothing in and in because you actually have to really concentrate. It's a bit like I was talking about meditation on on sort of skis because you've really got to stay focused. You've really you know. But then all of a sudden you've got this beautiful snow and you've got the trees around you and you're outside and. Yeah, the run might take you sort of 30 minutes to get down and then you really focus sort of thing. So I'm really, you know, really looking forward to getting out into nature and exercising that. It's, you know, it's six, seven hours a day, you know, so it's really healthy. You get home, yeah. you feel really good about yourself and you get up nice and early and that's, I'm really looking forward to that. So look, everyone, everyone watching, everyone listening, thanks for supporting us this year for the 28th show. But look, it really seriously, look after yourself in the break, have a great relaxing time whether it's on the beach whether it's in the snow whether it's at home with family or whatever it might look like there's no right or wrong just make sure you're doing something for yourself and looking after yourself so thanks everyone for your support yeah, culture awesome. house live we're uh, out, out for 2021 thanks for supporting us we'll thanks, see guys. you all in 2022 enjoy it bye see you, you next guys year. Um, happy happy holidays happy holidays